start doing some stuff with uh, LISP. Remember we were with the W3 schools, we were doing some of it. So I'll continue from there, but then today we'll do some exercises for you, so that you get used to. Yeah, some of you as I keep saying, initially we'll have a little difficulty because there is Python going on and there is C++ going on, so <laughs> you, will, you will have to bear with that. There is no other option because we have to finish all the language part as early as we can so that we can get down to more advanced coding later because these languages have to be learned. There is no other uh, way than that. Okay, so uh, just coming back. So we are dealing with a list but we are talking about it in a more abstract manner when we are talking about it in Python. So for us a list automatically gets created uh, as square brackets. You put some things there, automatically they sit in a list. Like in the morning we have to struggle to create a linked list of that many elements. We have to write our own uh, node and then we have to write our own uh, uh, display and append and all of that. So all of that comes to us very nicely packaged in, in a list in Python. Not that C++ doesn't have this feature, C++ also has this feature. It has the concept of a vector, which we will learn later, where we can add directly to the data structure and it will become big. But in Python it is ready made. So we have a list of apple, banana and cherry. Uh, yesterday I also talked about a last class, list comprehension, where we mention what comes in the list first and then the loop comes later. I hope you remember that. We talked about list comprehension. Okay. So now we'll do some interesting things about list, uh, starting with sorting. Okay. Now we will do some stuff with sorting. So just try and get how the sorting works. The basic sorting, there's not much to learn. It just sorts. I mean, you give a list, it sorts. There are two variants of that sort. Uh, let's look at both the variants. So, this is one variant. Can you make it a little bigger? Ah, then, ah. So, this is a list. And when you say this list dot sort, what happens is that list itself gets sorted. The same list on which you are calling sort gets sorted. Uh, sometimes that is a requirement. Sometimes you don't want it to happen. Uh, sometimes you want another list. Uh, mainly, meaning that you have a list which you want to keep as it is and then you want another list which is a sorted version of this list but you don't want the original list to be disturbed let the original list remain as what it is and then let the sorting on it happen and the sorted version of that list must emerge so that is a separate uh, list so if you want that then this won't work because if you see this code uh, this list is equal to 100, 50, 65, 82, to 23. This list itself will get sorted, which means what? This list will disappear. I mean, what, if, what will remain is the sorted version of this list. In some cases, that is fine. In some cases, you want to preserve that list. So, you use another version of it. Uh, I think it is right there below. Uh, but before we do that, uh, there is one more version of sorting which takes a parameter. This is called a named parameter. Uh, so look at that version. So it is also, if you just say simply sort, it will sort in ascending order without any, without any surprises. If you say reverse is equal to true, you will sort in descending order. That is, you know, you know that is obvious. Let's just check that. Uh, then I will talk about interesting variety. So when you say reverse is equal to true, Basically, you are asking for the list to be sorted in the reverse order. So, as you can see, the reverse lexicographic order is what you are able to see. You can also do it on your own. Uh, it's the reverse lexicographic order. Okay. Uh, then we move on. And this is again the same thing with numbers. Uh, now, this becomes interesting. Okay. Let me uh, sit back and talk a little bit about it. This one, yeah? So, if you look at this now, let's look at it carefully. Uh, let me pull a page. Okay. So, I have a, I have a list, let's say L1, of some numbers. Let's say 10, 15, 
14 and 30. Okay, some 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 list. Now uh, I want to sort, uh, but uh, I want to uh, uh, do something which is of course this list may not be a good example. Okay, let me not take this list. Let me take a slightly different list. Uh, minus 10, 15, 14, minus 3. So let's take this list. Uh, if I sort it, uh, what will I get? I'll get uh, minus 3, minus 10, oh sorry. I'll get minus 10, minus 3, 14, and 15. If I just do sort. Uh, now, if I sort it, with, uh, uh, let's say, uh, reverse, then you know what I'll get. I'll get 15, uh, whatever. Okay, I think I should give uh, another value here, which is, which is 7. In that case, yeah. So, 7. So, let's, let's do this and I'll show you what, uh, so let's create a list. Okay, just a minute, I'll, I'll just go to code and create a list. You want to create it here? Ah, create it in a practice program. So we'll open up a practice program and we'll create a list there and we'll play with the list a little bit. So you can refresh your screen, you'll get a practice one. Can it be so slow? Yeah, okay, it is it is a little slow. Okay, so we'll say L1 is equal to square bracket uh, minus 10, minus 3, 7, 14, 15. Okay, very, very, very innocuous, very, very simple kind of list, has five values in it. And once it has these five values, we will sort it. So as I said, uh, if you sort it, L1 dot sort, the list itself will change, but doesn't matter. At the moment it is okay. So we'll say L1 dot sort. Yeah. And then we'll say print L1. So as expected, You can see it better perhaps. Yeah. So as expected, it will give you an ascending order sort with minus 10, minus 3, whatever, 7, 14 and 15. Okay. Now if you say reverse, you will get the reverse of this. That is also not a surprise. Clear? So instead of ascending, you will get descending. What do you have to say? Reverse is equal to true with T uppercase. Yes? Done? Okay. Now, we come to an interesting aspect of sort. Suppose, I want to sort it, but not either in ascending order or in descending order, but I want to sort it using the absolute value of a number. This is just some manipulation of the number. So, I want to sort it based on absolute value of a number. So, in that case the answer will be 3 or rather minus 3, 7, minus 10, 14, 15. Do you agree? No, yes. If I sort it on an absolute value, I should get absolute value sort. How do we do that? Okay, so there what you can do is, and this is where the sort starts getting interesting. Here. All other languages also support this feature. Python supports this feature as we are seeing, going to see now. Java supports it, C++ supports it. Sort based on something else. Okay. So, uh, let's write this sort by writing a function above. So, we are going to write a function. You know how to write a function in Python? Okay. Def. We write a function def. Let's call that function myfunk. Some, some name. Okay which takes the number as a parameter and returns the absolute value of that number. 
Okay, so let's uh, you'll understand how it works. So def def my func n. So automatically when you put a colon, you have to get the indentation. I think automatically the indentation will come because of the editor. So you have to say return return uh, apps of n. Apps is a built-in function in Python called absolute. Okay. So apps of n. Okay. That's it. Now I have a nice function there. Are you with me? Which which has what? It has the ability to take a value and return its absolute value. You with me? So we have this function. And now if I have this function and I have that function returning absolute, can I use that function in my sorting? So what is that function doing? Taking a value and returning its absolute value. Okay, so let's see whether I can use it. So I'll say l1.sort, sort it all right, with key is equal to my fun. Same way. That's it, no? So please understand what I'm doing. Key means how do I get the key to sort using my fun? What does my fun do? Go to every value and produce its absolute value. See, the way you should interpret this, please, this is very important to understand how you interpret it. The interpretation is when you give a key, key means for sorting some key is required. By default, what is this key for sorting? The value itself. So initially the values were minus 10, minus 3, whatever, whatever the value which were there. But now I don't want that value. What I want, what is the idea for my sorting? What, is, what, what should be there? The idea of my sorting is, I want the absolute value of that value to be used for sorting. That is the sorting should not be done on the value itself but now I am saying don't do the sorting based on value but based on what this function which I am mentioning does to that value. What does this function do to that value? It produces the absolute value of that value. That is my uh, function. So uh, now let's see the impact of this, whether we get something else. Okay, as expected, as expected and you can run it also on your own and see, the answer is minus 3, 7, minus 10, 14 and 15. You know why you got that answer, correct? Because minus 3, absolute value is 3, 7, absolute value is 7, so on and so forth. Is that clear? So by employing a function, you can take any value and convert it into its absolute. I mean you are applying something to that value which should be used as a criteria for sorting. The value should not be used as a criteria for sorting. Okay, let's try one more, which will be also very trivial. So let's create another function. Above, above. Uske So def uh, we'll say another function, my fun 2. Okay. My fun 2. Uh, what will that do? Instead of producing an absolute value of a particular number, it will produce its square. Okay. So it will say return n into n. So now what will be used for sort? The absolute, uh, no, sorry, the square of that, square of that number will be used for sorting. So then it will come back to like our uh, absolute sort only. Why? Because the absolute value and the square value, the ordering will be the same. Now. Okay. So let's see. Again, we will uh, do do the second function uh, and print the list again. Okay. So let's see what we get. Okay, the answer will be exactly the same because whether you take absolute or you take square, the answer is the same. But now you are measuring each square against every other square. Are you getting it? Is everybody clear? So you can transform values and then use them for sort. Again, you can combine this with reverse is equal to true and do it. Believe me, this gets very useful, uh, very powerful at times. Okay. So it, it becomes a very, very uh, uh, useful value to solve. 
Okay, just because we are on the point, I am going to go a little forward. Okay, little forward. And, and then I am going to introduce its power. Okay, so let me put it there and then uh, you will understand. I am going a little forward, I am not covered pupils I know, but just because we are on a particular point, let us say we are going to do this. Okay, now I am going to create a list. Okay, but I am going to create a list as a series of tuples, as a list of tuples. Let us say each tuple has two things, age and marks. Are you with me? So, let me define it like this. Let me define a simple tuple. So, this is the first student. His age is 24 and the marks he has secured are 75. Okay. Now, this is a tuple. Please uh, understand why I am saying this is a tuple. Because I am using the parenthesis. Are you with me? Here I have used a square bracket. Unfortunately, my hand is not very good. So, uh, this is a square bracket, this is a tuple. Okay, first is age, second is percentage or marks, whatever. This first tuple. Then there is another tuple. Let's say his age is 23 and the marks he has secured are 85. And there is a third tuple. Uh, uh, let's say his age is 25 sorry, and the marks he has secured are 80. So this is a, a list of what? This is a list of tuples. Each tuple represents what? The age of the student and the marks secured by the student. Some two values. Okay. Now, if I just do sorting, what will happen? Okay. And then when I do this functions, how can I use them and do it? Shall we try that? Okay, let's do first blind sorting, just basic sorting. And then we will see how it works and then we will change the way we want the data to be sorted and bring it back. Okay? So let us uh, do this. So we will create that list first. You, did, you took down the list. L2 is equal to list tuple 24,75,85. comma Eighty-five. Then twenty-five comma eight. Yeah. So this is my list. Are you with me? This is my list. How many tuples? Three tuples. You are with me? Three tuples. We have not discussed tuples at length. We will. I am just going a little ahead. Because this is a good time to introduce list of pupil business. Uh, so we have a list of pupils and each pupil represents two things about a student, whatever they are. Now, let's say, we just say l2.sort. Just let's say l2.sort and let's sort that data and then print sort. Let's see what it does. Print l2. So, yeah, we can remove those. Yeah. Okay, so that we don't clutter our output, we'll just uh, print just that. Okay, so so let's let's run it. Okay, as expected, what did it do? By default, what did it do? You can see on your system also. It sorted based on first element of the pupil. Yes, that is a default behavior. If you don't say anything. If you don't didn't say anything, it will sort based on the first tuple, first uh, element, not first tuple, first element of a tuple. Okay, so first uh, item in a tuple, as we call it. Now, suppose I didn't want it that way. I want an ascending sort, but based on second element, which is marks. You with me? So, in this case. Uh, Ah, uh, so, so let's say I want it on the basis of marks. What will I do? So for every tuple, by default what is getting used? The first item is getting used. If you want the tuple to do, uh, if you want the sorting to do something else, you have to write a function. 
so let's write a function which will take and this function will be applied to every element. Now earlier our list consisted of directly values. Now our list consists of what? Tuples. So this function will be applied to every tuple. Okay. So the function will be applied to every tuple and I can work with that tuple now. Okay. So let's do that. You will, you will understand. So let's write a function myfunc3 which takes again some n as a parameter. But can you tell me what is n now? So n is a tuple please. Earlier each n was a number. Whatever the value in the list. This is very important to understand. Now each n is not a value. It is a tuple. Are we clear? So each tuple will be passed to this function. Whatever this function will yield, will return, that will be used as a criteria for sort. So the function may return anything. Okay. The function may return whatever that function has to return. That will become the key. That will be the criteria for sorting. So far we didn't give that. So what was the criteria for sorting? That value itself. Now we want to change what should be used as a criteria for sorting. So we'll say return, return n of square root, square root, huh? square root or flower root? Uh, I think square root. n of 1. Uh, we will just check whether this works or I think that this works. So we are treating the tuple as a list and saying square bracket one. So what is what are we saying? That for this tuple n, consider what is key? N one. N one means n zero. N one. You know the ordering. Right? Like every other language, ordering is at zero. So we are saying sort based on n one. That is sort based on marks. By default, what are you sorting on? H. Now sort on marks. So now I will supply that function as my criteria for sorting on N2. Let's see whether this works. Yeah, it worked. So we got, now the sorting, understand. The sorting is now 75 came first, 80 came second, 85 came third. Did you understand the difference? We change the way the sorting is going to happen by using a function. That function took each tuple and decided what should be the key for sorting. That is why it is called key is equal to function. Actually, we should say key is equal to function. It's by default taking that. Ah, we said, sorry. So, key should be taken as my func 3. That is, the key for every value should be coming from my func 3. Did you follow? No? Yes? Everybody clear? How? Uh, see, tomorrow this will get little more complicated when we get into list of Python objects. List of employees. So, each employee will have several fields. So, depending on this, we can choose what should be the criteria for sorting. See, whenever you have an aggregation of data, aggregation means collection of data, data about students, data about persons, data about boxes, data about books. The criteria for sorting, that is the decision as to what the sorting should be done on, will vary. And there is a variety of the sorting algorithm. By changing the uh, way you want the sorting to happen, you get a different sort of. And that's very powerful if it is used. Here we call it a key, key function. Uh, in other languages like Java, we call it a comparator. That means we are changing the comparator. Instead of comparing the values now, it is comparing what? It is comparing the ages. No, oh, sorry. It is comparing the marks. That is we are tuning what should be compared. Because if you understand sorting, prima facie, sorting needs an ordering among data. You can't sort something which is not ordered. Like you say, sort on the height of people, sort on the weight of people. There is some ordering where you should be able to say, uh, weight value is less than another weight value. So, he should come before, he should come later. But if I say, sort books, what is the, how do you sort books? You may say alphabetical order. 
Some may say, no, I will start on the number of pages in the book. Somebody else will say, no, I will start on the price of the book. So there can be various criteria, how do you want to sort a group of data, a book data. Some, and sometimes you may want to change that also. Sometimes it's by price, sometimes it's by the age of the book, sometimes it's by the weight of the book or size of the book, whatever. It could be any, any number of criteria. So how do you uh, tune your sort? So this is how you do it. Now, at this stage uh, is a good point where I am going to introduce one more idea. The idea of what do we call lambda functions. Okay. You have seen this before? Okay. So we'll pretend that nobody has heard of this before. And I'll introduce the idea of the lambda function. Here, same, same logic. We'll write in a different notation. Okay. So look at the way I'm going to write the first one. Uh, it's actually very similar. So uh, now, just watch the equivalent of this function in lambda notation. So the keyword we use is lambda. Argument is n, and I think we use colon. Okay. In other languages, we use an arrow, like in JavaScript and all. Lambda is there everywhere. Lambda is called functional program. I will we'll talk about it. So lambda n, uh, it will give abs of n. So this, I don't have to write as a separate function. Instead, uh, I can write it right here. Instead of uh, writing it here and calling it here, I can say key is equal to lambda n absolute of n. Here, for example, uh, lambda of n is equal to uh, n of, uh, sorry, you can say return, I think return is understood. But if you want, you can say return, uh, but it's understood. Okay, so we will write it using a lambda. So you don't have to write a separate function. We will convert that function notation to a lambda notation. Lambda notation starts with the keyword lambda. L-A-M-D-A, lambda. Then uh, the parameter, whatever you need to pass to that function comes next, x or whatever. Colon, body of the function. And then if the body is many lines, you can put uh, yeah. Flower brackets and do a return. Or if the body is very simple, like here, you can simply say return whatever you want to return. So we will write there. So yeah, now you see that line 10. Focus your attention on line 10. Uh, we are going to sort the first list using absolute values, but look at the way we have indicated. Sort key is equal to lambda. Lambda is a reserved word of Python language. So that's why it's appearing in that color. So, lambda, uh, n, n is the parameter. What should you do with n? You should take the absolute value of n. So, that is what you are asking for. So, lambda, n, colon, absolute value of n. That is what you are going to get. And, uh, okay. So, similarly, you can write for, let's say, L2, uh, for uh, function 2 also, where we are doing a square. So, you can say, T is equal to lambda n into n no no let's go n into n the last one is my fun three instead of writing a function you can write that in lambda lambda takes n as a parameter and returns n one that is the second sec item of the tube. Okay. We will get the same result. Only thing is, instead of using a classic uh, Python function, we have defined it using a lambda notation. Only thing has changed is the way we are denoting the notation. So we are having L1, L2 and uh, uh, L1 is done twice. So let us see what answers we get. So, as expected, the answers have not changed. Uh, we are still getting based on absolute value or, or whatever. Uh, and uh, the answer has not changed one bit. Okay? The answer was not expected to change also. It is a different style of writing the same code. 
Now, lot of people now prefer to write the other way, lambda way, because that is how functional programming works. Uh, now you'll ask, what's the big deal? <laughs> you can write it above and you can write it here. Well, the way it is is that earlier, whenever you had to write a function, you had to create a function separately. Now, the functions get created dynamically. What you are seeing, the earlier style, what we just saw, was the earlier was a static style of writing functions. This is a more dynamic style of writing function where as you are writing the SAR, there itself you think of a function and write it. There is no need to create a separate function and do. When will that be useful? When these functions have only one use. Okay, let me go back. Okay, suppose that function my fun, my fun 2, my fun 3 was getting used in many other sortings also, in many other places also, then I should create them as functions. Because then I create the functions in one place and then I use it in another place. Very often but what happens in programming is, as programming has become more and more extensive, that we have functions but they are used only once. So in that case, why should the compiler be able to make to write a function, then use that function? Instead, where it is getting used, there it will create the function. That is the lambda style of doing it. So today that has become a very predominant style. Because if you are going to need a function only in one particular place, which quite often is the scenario, then you just create it there using the lambda notation and be done away. You don't have to create it in the beginning and all that. Because calling a function and maintaining a function also becomes difficult. Not for small things, but big things. Okay, so we have discussed a bit about how lists work and how sorting works and we have also seen how to tweak the sort to work in R. Shall we move on? Okay, now I am uh, going to introduce an idea called map filter. Yeah, we are going to introduce three operations, okay, uh, which are called map, filter and reduce. I think I mentioned it last time. We are going to see how map works, how uh, filter works and how reduce works. You have to become extremely comfortable with this because now these are becoming the current programming style. Uh, so uh, if you want to sum up all the elements, they say use a reduction. Uh, if you want a max of elements, use a reduction. That is what they say. Or if you want to filter out elements on based on certain things, use a filter. Okay, so, so that's how this whole thing works. So, I am going to show you how to do it. Okay, we will play with filters and lists. We are starting a fresh program, so you can do that as well. Yeah, so here we go. Uh, let me write a bit of code and then we will see the code happening. So let me take a different sheet. So let's say I have a list L1, 10, 15, 14, 13, 18. These are some elements in a list, some general list. Now I want to produce a list L2 which is this list with a filter operation which are elements of L1 wherein uh, the, the uh, uh, elements are all modulo 2 equal to 0 meaning they are all even numbers. So I want to produce a filter uh, which has a condition and the list. Okay? So uh, I will write that code and then you see whether it works. So I will write filter, I am going to write a filter. Filter, the first parameter is a lambda notation, again lambda, which says under what condition it should return true or false. If it returns true, the element is retained. You will understand that. Uh, lambda x colon true if 
x modulo 2 equal equal 0. This is the first parameter and the second is L1. This is filter and we have to convert that answer into a list. Okay, I will write it one by one. Just take this data. So I will say L1 is equal to So we have this list Okay, now what I want is L2 to be produced Which should contain only the even numbers in that list Normally you can write a for loop And uh, get the elements in the list I don't want to do that I want to make it more easier Using a filter operation okay. So I will say uh, Filter lambda x return true if x modulo 2 equal equal comma l so look at the filter operation filter operation is like a function takes two parameters okay first is a lambda and second is the list on which it has to work okay you will it will take a little while to get familiar but you should get familiar first is a lambda function the lambda function's job is to return true or false. Filter will only work on true or false. If it returns true for a particular element, it is retained, else it does not retain. As simple as that. Okay. So now, uh, actually we have to convert that filter output into a list. Okay, let's see what happens now. Let's, let's run it and see what happens and then we'll correct it. Ah, we get an invalid syntax return.
If it returns false, this value will be removed from the output. So in this case, you see lambda x, so 10, first value it will work with is 10. Will it return true for 10? Yes, because x modulo 2. Achha, all of you know what is modulo 2, no? The modulo operation. If it is equal to 0 means the value is even. Okay? So we are saying x, so first it will work with 10. So 10, is it going to return true or false? It's going to return true. So 10 will come in the output. Okay? Now, the output of filter has to be converted into a list. Because by default, the output of filter, after all the filtering is done, is something called an iterable, which cannot be printed. So we have that outer list is to take the output of filter and convert it into a list. So that list is like a function. So it is taking whatever that filter is throwing out. So filter is will throw out what? The throw out means, uh, okay, throw out is a double edged word. Uh, throw, throw out means whatever it has selected, it will be the result of the filter. So the result of the filter will be 10, 14, and 18. That means that which has filtered through, it has been picked by the filter. Remember the filter runs on every value and only if it is true, it comes into the output. But the output is just some kind of a vague collection. So we have to convert that output into a list. So that's why that outer list is there. That, is, that will take whatever the filter has produced and convert that into a list. This is called the list constructor. Okay, uh, in, in Python. So the list constructor takes the output of filter as a parameter and produces a nice list. So what we have got as a result is a list. So L2 is a list. Okay, that is with the square bracket. If you print it, you will see the square bracket. You can try on your own. So, it's gone off our screen. Sham 
His marks are 70. Eighteen and seven. Okay. And this is my list. So you can see the pupil also can be mixed. It need not be all alphabets or all strings. It is a mixed. Are you with me? Now remember what is my filter condition? My filter condition is I want only those students remaining, those pupils remaining whose average marks are more than 60. Am I clear? All other people should go out from this list. Only those whose average mark is greater than 60, they should remain. Everybody else should walk out. Yes? Should we write a simple filter for doing that? Okay. So, let, let's Let's, okay, how will we write the filter? Okay, L2 is equal to list. And now we have to write the filter. This will produce a list and it will take a filter as its operation. So, filter. Filter needs, remember, how many parameters? Two. First one is a function, a lambda function. It can be an outside function also. But I am preferring to write a lambda function. So first will be a lambda function and the second one will be the list on which this lambda must run. So filter. Now what I want to do? I want to select only those whose average marks are greater than 60 or equal to 60. Okay. How will I do that? So I will say filter lambda x colon. Now what will be x? Sorry. What will be x? Each tuple, each tuple will be x. Please get it correct. So that group of values including his name and maths, physics, chemistry, marks together is x. Because x is working on every element of the list. Every element of the list in this case happens to be a tuple. Okay people of values. So, lambda x and what are we saying? Uh, if is there, no? You can use if, no? Uh, if uh, if uh, x 0, no, not 0, x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 all of this added, okay, I think I need another bracket. We put brackets accordingly. Modulo, uh, sorry, not modulo. Percentage, no, no, divided by 3 greater than or equal to 60. Uh, return, return, no. true. No, no, huh? only two. Else, false. Okay, let's try and write that. And the second, huh? correct. Before? Achha. True if, sorry. Sorry. True if. Ah. Okay. We'll write it. I think I made a mess there. So let's write it neatly. Uh, L1 Okay, we are creating it again. We will write over that. Comma. is equal to list of 
list of filter filter lambda x true true if x0 x1 plus x2 plus x3 divided by 3 greater than or equal to 60 else false comma L. Okay, I don't know how many of you got it. Okay, but now we can remove uh, print L. Okay, we'll remove our stuff. Yeah, okay, let me, no, before I run it. Okay, let me go through that list of filter lambda x true. It is this way of writing somewhat like that list comprehension first right what should be the result true if some condition is fulfilled else false so uh, the condition is uh, if x1 plus x2 plus x3 whole thing we have put brackets there whole thing divided by 3 is greater than or equal to 60 then it is true else it's false so true, true, if this condition is fulfilled, else it will return false. And the second parameter to the filter operation is L1. I think we need one more bracket there to close the list. List also has to close now, that's right. Ah. So let's see whether we'll get what we want. Let's run it. Yeah. So, we got only two people in the output, as you can see. The two people in the output are Ram and Sham. Are you with me? One person went out because his average did not cross 60, greater than or equal to 60. So, you see here, Ram, his marks are 50, 70 and 60. His average is 60. 60. And, huh? And Sham, his average is above 60, so he also passed the filter. So the filter rejected uh, Gopal because his marks were not, average marks were not greater than or equal to 60. Did, did you understand? Now if you have to write this with any other language, believe me, you have to write a bunch of code. You have to take every mark, add it, do, do all that. In Python, this is the elegance of Python. Things happen in one line, two lines, three lines, that kind of stuff. Typical size of the code if you write C++ or Java will be this big. For that same size, Python will be this small. Uh, because the language is that much more capable. Okay. And uh, it has more inbuilt abilities than like this, for example, this filter operation. Now, of course, Having said that, now other languages are also copying this. So, when I discuss uh, C++ or Java with you, I will show you how to do a filter operation in C++ also and a filter operation in Java also. They also now allow this. See, this is the, uh, you know, preeminence of what we call functional program. See, Lambda programming, the more technical name of that is functional program. So this is because functional programming, everybody has borrowed. See, Java started out as an object-oriented programming, but they realized that most programmers prefer this kind of writing, so they are shifting to Python. So what these clever guys did is, uh, people are running away from my language, so why don't I introduce some of those constructs in Java also, in C++ also, so that People who say, Are you don't have filter operation, you don't have map operation, you don't have reduce operation. No, 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 we have it, we use it. We have added, we have enhanced our language to support this. But this comes natively supported in Python. It is supported as like a library, outside library, when it comes to Java or C++. It is not native to the language. It is not intrinsic to the language. It is added 
uh, like a appendage to the language. But they have done that. I mean, it's there now. You can use it. So that's why I, this extra emphasis that you need to know how to use map, reduce, and filter. So we have seen only filter. We are not tired. Some of you look very tired. Uh, okay. So this is one filter operation. Now there is another cousin of filter, not cousin actually. Uh, another operation called mapping, map. So let's see how map works. Okay, there also you have to take the output and convert it into list like we did here. So we will see how a map works. What does map do? Okay, what does filter do? It rejects some people. Correct? Okay? If you for, for that particular element, if it is returning true, only it accepts it, otherwise it rejects it, kicks it up. Okay. Now, what does map do? What map does is it transforms each element. Okay. Similar to, somewhat similar to what we did earlier when we were sorting. Remember we use a lambda function to see what its value is. But this is more generic. This is mapping. Okay, so map uh, produces something or transforms something and produces something else. That is, it has an input and it produces something from that input. Okay, so that is what map does. Now what kind of thing it does, that's up to us to decide. Okay, so let, let's take an example. Okay, so I have, uh, similar to this, okay, I have now a map, uh, uh, sorry, a list, which has a list of pupils, we just saw that. Now, what I want to be produced, okay, is something which is a uh, mapping of the marks into its average marks. Okay. So let's see whether we can map that to the average. Now we are not really trying to remove anybody. We are only trying to transform. So let's take L1 only. You can borrow that L1. So we will borrow that L1. Just see this in that side. Ah, now we will write a map. I will write it in, in my language uh, like this. It has to be a list. So list. It has to convert whatever map does just like filter does into this. Map. So map. Again we use lambda. Again lambda notation. Lambda x. No return, is it written? So it produces x1 plus x2 lambda x is it uh, does this to x that is it takes it and converts it into x1 plus x2 plus x3. This is the transformation and L1 is the other parameter. So, correct now? So, what am I doing is, I am converting x into uh, something which is the sum of all the marks. That is how I am transforming. I am forgetting the name. If you want, you can bring back the name also. Okay, we will we'll, we'll talk about that. But, lambda x, it's going to every x, it's going to every one doing x1 plus x2 plus x3. That is a transformation. This is a transformation. This function represents the transformation. So lambda. Lambda x transforms. That is each x is transformed into that is each of this each of this is transformed into x1 plus x2 plus x3 only. So this is transformed into this. So what will I get as a output? Let's see what I get as an output. List of whatever the map produces, map of lambda x and x1 plus x2 plus x3. And 
that is the lambda and then the lambda has to act on L1 and the whole thing has to be converted into a list. Okay, so we will rub it and okay, wait. So, what is the job of lambda? It is not to eliminate. Are you with me? We are not eliminating anything. We are transforming each element in a way we want it. What do we want? We want all the marks of the student to be aggregated and we want an output list to be produced which is an aggregation of the marks of the student. So, in this case, if you are doing it right, for Ram, we should get 180, for Gopal, we should get 140, and for Sham, we should get uh, 220. Correct? This is what we should get, if you are doing our transformation correctly, our mapping correctly. So, let us let's write it out and see whether we get it. So, as expected, the marks we are getting, the transformation which is happening is, did you understand? We got 180, 140, 220, you know what we got. Did we eliminate anybody? We did not eliminate anyone. What did we do? We took each x, each x is every tuple, consisting of four things, name and all that. Now, you will say, oh, I am missing out name, I am not seeing name. What do you think I should do? No, no, are you getting my question? My question is, I am not getting the name. I am only getting the aggregate marks. The output I want is, Shah 180, Gopal 140, whatever, whatever the names have, I didn't get that in the right order. Name and total marks, that is how I want it. Okay. What should I do? So I have to change my lambda. Uh, right now it is producing x1 plus x2 plus x3. Before that, can it produce something else? How should I say it? I should say x0, comma, correct? No. I want a tuple. No, no. A reduced tuple. Name and aggregate marks. So I should say x0. I think you will need a bracket around x0, uh, x0 and x3. That is because it's a tuple. Okay? Let's see what I get and then we'll discuss. Yeah. As expected, see what I'm getting now. I got Ram, comma 180. Are you understanding what I'm doing? Whatever. I am getting a reduced tuple. I am not eliminating anyone. Are you with me? I am just transforming the data from whatever it was to something else. To different representation. Okay. So, and I am converting the output into a tuple. Did you know why I put the inside parenthesis? Because I am looking for a tuple. I want lambda x. x is a tuple. And the output of that should be also a tuple. How do I do that? I I do whatever I have to do and put parenthesis around it. So look at my code. I am saying lambda x, that is go to each tuple, take, convert, uh, produce an output tuple, okay, which is x0, comma, x1 plus x2 plus x3. That is another value. So how many values are there in every tuple? Two, name of the person as it is and aggregate marks compute. Okay. So this is how you do. Now suppose good good corollary which you do at this stage is suppose I have now a list of names of people. Okay. Names are how? First name and second. Not first name and last name. Okay. Now I have a list. List of what? List of tuples. Each tuple has what? Each tuple consists of two parts. First name, last name. So you have to produce a list. What kind of list? Which is combined first name and last name. 
Are you getting? So let me make the input list L1 or L3. L3, yeah. L3 is equal to list of first name, last name. Neil Gopi. Start with that if you want. Comma. Now, this is one. Are you getting? This is one tuple. Where we have first name separately, second name separately. Then one more. Unlike 
uh, filter and map which use only one parameter of lambda x. Here we use two because this is something to do with the previous element also. So when you are multiplying, remember multiplying takes two two things, yes. two operations. So uh, you will understand. So we will say L6 is equal to reduce. Reduce is producing only one value. So there is no need for that list constructor. It doesn't produce a list. Whereas map produces a list, filter produces a list. Reduce is only one value. Okay. So we will say reduce. Reduce, uh, we have to describe what reduction we do. Okay. So lambda x comma y. We take two parameters in lambda x comma y is x into y. So what it will do is, okay, then uh, reduce comma the uh, function answer what I will do, L5. Uh, okay, wait, wait. Now, just watch. What is it going to do? Okay. So L5 contains 5 values. Okay. So first time, it will take x and y as what? 52 and 41. Are you with me? X will become first value automatically. Y will become second value. So it will multiply the first two values and store the result somewhere. Forget where. Somewhere. Then what it will do? That will become the X now. No, yes. 52 into 41 will become the next X. So that will be multiplied by 85. So that will be the xy. That will now become the x. Are you with me? This is like accumulating that value in some intermediate variable and using that successively. So it will multiply the first two, store the result. Now that becomes the first parameter. Again multiply it with that incrementally. That becomes again the new first parameter and it progresses. So uh, now you will say uh, uh, x, y, x into y, L5. So let's see what we get. I, uh, uh, okay. So yeah, from tools. Acha. <laughs> okay. Uh, you try. You try. Not working. Okay. Acha, thanks. We have to import a library. Uh, so this is all to do with different different Python compilers have different things. So for map and reduce you don't have to import it. Sorry, map and filter you don't have to import anything. But for reduce apparently you have to import something called func tools. So you have to say from func tools import reduce. Otherwise reduce doesn't come in your program. Func tools is a library. Okay, func tools. Function tools. Func tools. So you will have to add a line from func tools import reduce because reduce is not automatic. Again, you try on some other system, you may get reduce. Okay, because they have already incorporated their that this in their Python. Okay, we have not this because we are following the conventional Python. We are not. So you will have to say from func tools import reduce. Are you with me? Again, I am telling you, this may not always be true. I mean, certain Python compilers will allow you to do reduce also. Okay. So, from from tools import reduce. Now, reduce has come from that library. You are explicitly saying, get the reduce from that library. The name of the library is from tools. And the name of the function that you want from there is reduce. So, get from from tools, get reduce or import reduce. So you're getting that. And now, now you got your reviews. So, well, that's a fairly big number. Number is not important. So, you'll get some number. What is that number? It's a product of all the numbers. Is this clear? Easy? So we have seen how to do sort basic without lambda. Then we have seen sort with lambda. 
Sun without lambda has no value. What will you do with it? Okay. It's just a basic sun, really. nothing more. Um, and then we have seen map, reduce, and fit. Okay. Now we just have one small topic and we'll stop. Okay. Now this is important, so you need to understand this. Okay. One small thing and. Change 
you do to one, will have no effect on the other. That's what you want, no? Well, depends on what you want. <laughs> okay. So here now when I print LA, I should see 10. Okay. Now you have seen. Is it clear? What happens? Yes? So be careful why you should use dot com. Convinced? So we have seen copy, sort, map, reduce, filter. Okay. These are crucial operations. Now next session onwards we will give you more exercises. We will do and we will go deeper further. So this is what basically you need to know about this. Okay. Uh, while doing that we also covered about pupils little bit. But we will discuss pupils separately as a separate topic.